I interview a ton of people at my job and I see the same mistake over and over again when software developers interview for us. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey developers, my name is Eric. I am a software engineer at Amazon and today we're gonna talk about some tips that you should know to get into a FANG or big tech company and some things you probably should avoid too. So I've interviewed a lot of people in my job and I've seen some amazing interviews and some not so amazing interviews. And today I wanna share you some secrets that I have found from all this and some things that you can do to pass these interviews. Hey, and if you're listening right now, I want you to leave a comment below. Let me know how your interview experience is there's a lot of stuff happening right now in the tech world. There's layoffs, there's hiring freezes. I really think that good candidates can still get through this process and that a lot of companies are still hiring. So don't let that discourage you. Also, if you are completely stuck in this process, I'll put a link in the description. I actually do offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So let's just jump into the video. So to begin, let me tell you a quick story. I coach a kid's basketball team with my son and we have practices every single week. And at the beginning of every single practice, I have the kids dribble the ball, practice passing, layups, shooting, and just the basics of basketball. Some of the kids actually think it's kind of boring at the beginning, but it's something I always press and push for every one of my kids to do because knowing the basics is really, really important. And when you're interviewing for these big tech companies, knowing the basics is really important. So if your job title that you're interviewing for is a front end engineer, you should know the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you should know how responsive design works. You should know how to add event listeners. You should know some basic CSS. You should understand the differences between classes and IDs. And when I'm interviewing, this always trips people up. It always trips people up when I ask them about the box model. I ask them to create a simple layout. So if you can't do these things, you are not going to pass a FANG interview. And same thing for a software development engineering position, being able to answer common questions about how a REST interface works or how to create endpoints or all the HTTP verbs out there. You should know these things before you go into the interview. And it doesn't even take that long. I would say if you spend like maybe, I don't know, three, four hours before one of these interviews, just go over the basics of either front end engineering or SDE type position before you get into a phone call with somebody, it'll help you a lot. Now, a common thing I see all the time is that candidates try to go for those mid-level or senior positions when they really should be going for the junior position. So I'd highly recommend if you're straight out of a boot camp or you maybe only have one or two years of experience or you're still a CS student or still in college, go for an internship or go for a junior position at some of these FANG type companies. Now the interviews are gonna be hard, but they're gonna be not as difficult as a mid-level or a senior level, level position. Better yet, if you can get an internship, that is the best way to start because you're gonna learn so much and there's not gonna be a lot of pressure of you. Most FANG type companies aren't gonna expect their junior or, or interns to know a whole lot. So the interview is really catered towards what you've been learning in school and to show some of the skills that you've learned. And one other quick note, for those mid-level or senior level, they really don't always apply one-to-one -one with the experience you have right now. You may be a senior or staff level at the startup or a company you're at now, which may not translate to a staff or senior level at a big tech company like Google or Amazon or Facebook. So there's really no shame in taking a mid-level position or even a junior position to get your foot in the door. Now, obviously, if you have 10 or 20 years of experience going in for a junior level position doesn't make sense. But if you have three or four and you're considered a senior in your job, don't have, I would, I would highly recommend going for a junior position or mid-level position at a FANG type company. Shoot for those levels. Don't shoot for the senior because it's a much different process and it's much more difficult. I see this all the time during the interviews I have with candidates is that they're doing great in the technical part, but when we get to situational questions, questions about their past, questions about some of the experience they have, or more of these soft type skill questions, they really fail. And keep in mind, a lot of engineers think they can just BS their way through the soft skill type questions, but what we're really looking for in these big tech companies is what sort of impact that you had in your prior positions, what have you accomplished? And it's really hard to just BS all that. You really have to make sure that you prepare for these type questions and that you have thoughtful and meaningful experience in these questions that you're giving. This could just take a couple of hours of coming up with scenarios and things that happened in your past 
that you can weave into these type of questions that show impact and show that you actually took initiative and got XYZ accomplished. So for example, I might ask a question about a time you went above and beyond. So you should be able to come up with a plan of attack for what you did in your past jobs where you went above and beyond. And it's even better if you can actually have statistics or some kind of evidence of what you did that actually accomplished XYZ. And if you are beginning of your career and you don't have many examples of times you went above and beyond or some of these common questions, you need to think back on the time you were at school where you took charge on a project. Anything even outside of tech can work as long as it shows that you have the initiative and the drive. So don't neglect these these type of questions because it will really hinder you and it could be the difference between you getting the job offer or not. Another tip I would say is don't overemphasize system design. I see this all the time where someone wants to get into a tech company and they spend half their time in algorithms and even more time on system design and they get really worried about the system design part. The truth is unless you're going for a senior or staff level position at a lot of these companies, your system design questions aren't gonna be that bad. In fact, for junior level positions at most of these companies, you're not gonna get any system design question. If you're going in for an internship or level level junior, probably not gonna get much of any system design. It's really when you hit the mid-level and senior level where that makes more sense. And like I said before, for most people probably listening right now, unless you have 10 or 20 years of experience and have worked in really high tech, cutting edge, or you've been the sole developer and you've been an architect, you're probably gonna be going for those mid-level or junior level positions. And so those are where you wanna focus more on your algorithms, your soft skills, the basics, things that I've mentioned before. It's worth mentioning, and you probably heard this before, but I wanna kinda of repeat it, that if you are going for these type of jobs, make sure that you set a schedule to study every single day. So what I mean by that is you want to set a time frame, at least an hour, maybe two every single day where you're going to study algorithms, data structures. You're gonna focus on the basics like I've talked to you about. You're gonna look through those soft skills, everything we've talked about in this video so far, you need to do about every single day. So a great idea about doing this is make sure you, you build a habit. There's a lot of really good habit books you might wanna check out. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description for one from James Clear that I really like. But it's a the idea that if you build this habit up, over weeks that it's gonna become second nature to you and you're gonna get into that habit of studying every day and getting just a little bit better at algorithms, data structures, and these type of interviews. It's also good to kind of mix it up every now and then. You may be five days in a row of studying algorithms, maybe the sixth day you try something completely different or maybe you try a mock interview with someone, but you wanna keep it interesting, you wanna keep this habit going and it's the only way you're gonna really pass these interviews. And finally, my last tip is to make sure that if you do go in these interviews, take lots of notes and understand that most people don't pass it on the first try and that you should try to reapply. In fact, me personally, I applied for Google multiple times. I got one on-site interview, didn't pass. I interviewed at Meta a few times. I got one interview that went to the on-site, I didn't pass. I failed in phone interview once. I've interviewed at GE and some other big tech companies. So I've gone through my all my failures, but one thing I've always done, every time I failed an interview, I try to learn from it, and I pick myself up and try it again in the future. So that's easier said than done, because sometimes you feel that dejection and rejection, and you don't want to do anything. But the good thing is, is that you can always reapply, usually within six months to a year to a lot of these big tech companies. And there's so many tech companies right now out there that you could probably just pick another one in the same sort of niche that you're interested in. And they're gonna be very similar, probably even similar in pay as long as one of their large com tech companies. I'll add one more thing. I know I've heard online and I've seen the layoffs. I've seen some companies not hiring as often, often as much. So this should be really a numbers game. You need to apply for as many places as you can because there's gonna be a lot of companies that aren't applying. And then look for companies you applied in the past and reapply to them because most of the time, between six months to a year, you can reapply and there's no shame in doing it. So good luck on everything I've said here. I want to hear in the comments below, let me know your experience for interviewing. How is the job market for you right now? I really hope to hear from you and take care.